Welcome to Healing Generations, a podcast creating a dialogue uplifting the importance of healing, strengthening, and supporting our communities, and that addresses the disparities and inequities in communities of color. Healing Generations is brought to you by the Healing Generations Institute, a collaborative initiative of the National Compadres Network and the Brotherhood of Elders. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on our new releases. I say welcome to all of you. This is Jerry Teo with the National Compadres Network and the Healing Generations Institute and Podcast. We want to welcome you to the Healing Generations Podcast as we begin another year in 2023 and really welcome you all. But I want to begin, as we always do, by just giving gratitude. Give gratitude uh, to Creator, to the ancestors, and as we you know, bring to mind the ancestors. I want to just take a moment to invite you to just think about all your ancestors, all those that have come before, and some you may know and some you may not know. Some you're not sure of uh, you know, that lineage, how far back it goes, but just know that within your DNA, within your blood, with your mind, your spirit, your heart, and everything you do lies the dreams and hopes of all those that came before you. And we always like to begin with a sense of acknowledgement. And we're going to talk about that uh, today in this podcast, that sense of acknowledgement, why, why that isn't so important. But as we begin today, let's acknowledge all those ancestors. And as we breathe very deeply, let's uh, also bring to mind all those people along our journey that have guided us, uh, the maestros, maestros, the teachers, the OGs, the big mamas, the abuelitas, the grandmas, even the young people that have taught us, that have challenged us, our children, our grandchildren, the young people we work with, our colleagues, our staff, and those people that really have been on the other side of the aisle, that have been uh, the contrasters to us, uh, challenging us maybe in their views and their ways, who uh, hopefully we've learned from as well. We want to bring all the energy of all of that into today as we give thanks for the lessons that have come along this journey. And as we do that, we also acknowledge very deeply the struggles and the wounds. And as we focus here on healing generations, it's about lifting up the medicine of our ancestors, of our cultures, of our ways, of people of all ways, of all roots, of all identities. But at the same time, recognizing that you know, the wounds, the struggles, the pain, the generational trauma that never got healed is still with us. And it's with us uh, in our minds, it's with us in our spirits, it's with us in our bodies. We carry it in, in how we do what we do. And it's with us, uh, that pain and that struggle is with us in our world, in our communities, in our systems, in our families. And so part of what we want to lift up today is is a recommitment to work on those things that that really uh, bring us a sense of of pain and struggle and insecurity and make us doubt the sacredness in who we are and recommit to the sacred teachings, recommit to the sacred ways, to the sacred traditions, which doesn't mean that everything is fine and wonderful. It just means that we have a grounding place to spring off from. And so as we begin today, we are in great gratitude for those ancestors, for those teachers, for those teachings, And for the community in which uh, we find ourselves, wherever you find yourself, is to think about your community. And think about the caretakers of that land, the original caretakers of that land. I'm on Tangva, Gabrielenio land. I want to acknowledge the relatives there for allowing us to be here and allowing us to, uh, to hold space here. And I invite you to acknowledge those people of that land too. But then, as we do that, then we acknowledge the people of our neighborhoods, the barbarios of our communities, those people that live there every day and attempt to do the best they can to survive, to grow, to laugh, to play, to whatever is necessary in order to keep them and their families and all their relations uh, moving in a good way. And then as we take a breath, let's acknowledge ourselves. You know, who are you? You know, who are you this new year? Who are you? It's a good time to reflect on in that previous year. And as we do that, you know, I want to invite you as as we begin, you know, this year's dialogue, this year's journey, this year's podcast, and the many hosts and guests we have, we want to give thanks for all those that have come before this last year. 
that has given us teachings, that have given us blessings, that have shown us, you know, the way to even address some of the some of the struggles and the trauma that we have. We really appreciate those that have come on with us and been with us. We considered the wisdom keepers. That, and whether they were the elders or the elders or the mujeres or the young people, all of them carry their teachings and we're really grateful for all those that uh, that came and shared with us. But as we begin this 2023, I want to I wanted us to take a little bit of time to ground and reflect on those four sacred teachings of life again. And that first, you know, sacred teaching, you know, reminds us that when we come into this world, however we come into this world, we come as a blessing. We come as sacred. And for some of us, that's a challenge, you know. Uh, I was just... Uh, <laughs> Uh, talking with with you know my compañera Susana and we were talking because I you know for myself I just uh, completed seventy years and I said oh I'm getting old and she says watch out watch out and I said what do you mean watch out watch out for your words you know she says how you describe yourself what you say about yourself how you talk about yourself you're saying you're old well your body's going to hear that your spirit's going to hear that your heart's going to hear that your mind's going to hear that and and if it believes it it's going to start to act that way so she said to me you know. She says, be careful with your words, be careful how you describe yourself, how you talk about yourself. And and it was a really good teaching for me, really good teaching. You know, how do you acknowledge yourself? How do you see yourself? How do you, you know, when you get up in the morning and look in that mirror, what do you say? <laughs> wow, look at, <laughs> what do you say? You know, and and what we don't realize is that some of what we say to ourselves are those things that have been said to us or about us. So I want to, just for a moment, have each of you reflect on, you know, how do we nurture the sacredness of who we are? How do we acknowledge the blessing of who we are? And, and in saying that, it doesn't mean that, that we don't have issues or that we're not struggling or that we haven't done things in the past, maybe that, that uh, weren't in line with the sacredness of the blessing of who we are. But it doesn't take away that grounded, rooted sense of, of us being sacred and us being a blessing. It doesn't take away the prayers and the dreams that our ancestors and our grandparents had for us. It doesn't take away that anyone that comes into this world, however you journeyed here, whether you came from you know two parents that were preparing to have you and love you and, and brought you in this world and you had a wonderful welcoming, or if you didn't because your parents or your family was struggling at the time and Regardless of how you entered this world, with your first breath, it was a fulfillment of our ancestors' dreams. And it was a fulfillment and a reaffirmation that another sacred blessing, another sacred being is here in this universe to contribute, to share, to learn, to be part of a collective force for health, well-being, healing, and peace in this world. And so I want to ask you, as we reflect back, you know, what have you learned this year that can add to your sacredness? What have you learned this year that can add to you feeling like a blessing? And in doing that, we recognize that in our indigenous culture, there's always that sense of duality. You know, you can't have night without day and day without night. And so we recognize with the blessing and with the sacredness, they're the cargas, they're the struggles, they're the pains, they're the you know, the shadow part that walks with us too. And so as we think about, you know, us as blessings as sacred, uh, let us contemplate for a second. And I'm going to ask you to, to at least, you know, choose one. But usually we do things in four. So if you could think of four things that uh, you want to consider watering this year that will make you feel like a blessing, and ground you in your sacredness. What is it that you want to water? What is it that you want to feed? What is it that you want to grow in yourself to reinforce the sense of you being sacred and you being a blessing? And it may just be that you wake up every morning in gratitude. Every morning in gratitude that when you wake up and open your eyes, even though you may not want to get up that early or you got a lot to do, that if you take 30 seconds and just say, thank you, Creator. Thank you, Abuelita. Thank you, Virgen. Thank you, whoever is the sacred ones in your life. 
Thank you, universe. Thank you, you know. Because what we may not realize is that when you wake up and live your life in gratitude, it reorients the cells in your body in such a way that is receptive and it's open to more things of gratitude, more things that could come your way. And so it may be just that, but I'd like you to consider what are those things, what are those things that you can call to and commit to? And we're not talking, you know, about uh, being New Year's resolutions. We're talking about daily, you know, commitment, daily compromiso, daily palabra of what you're saying to yourself that you will, you know. And for me, I'm committing to that sense of gratitude. I want to be more grateful this year. And, and in spite of everything that goes on, because we will get those challenges and we live in a world now where there's a lot of struggle and we see it, a lot of pain. A lot of people struggling with mental health issues and depression and anxiety and financial challenges and experience, you know, hardship and some even grieving because of death, right? And so we can very much recognize that life sometimes is a struggle. But even within that struggle, right, the ability for us to be here and use those challenges as teachings, to use them as ways of acknowledging, you know, what really is going on in our lives and to decide how we are going to move with those challenges. And it can help if we begin with gratitude. The gratitude that we have in being able to choose, being able to decide what is the best way for us to approach this year. So I want to lift that up to you. You know, what, what are those things that you want to consider? And, and I would have you consider four things that, and it could be eating better, maybe certain things. You know, I, I love donuts, man. I love donuts and <laughs> I love hot dogs and I love sodas. You know, I, I like to eat a good hamburger with fries with a, you know, Pepsi and, and those things are not good for me. So part of my commitment in terms of honoring the sacredness of who I am and my being, I am really choosing to eat more healthy for me, that I have to choose not what necessarily I want all the time or that I crave, and but what is good for me. It takes discipline, you know. So the question is, what is good for you? You know, in you choosing how to honor your sacredness and honor yourself as a blessing, let me ask you to contemplate what is good for you in your life. You know, what things are good for you to eat? What things is it good for you to do? Is it uh, taking care of your health? Is it taking a walk every morning? What are those things that are good for you? And as we begin to think about what is good for you, contemplate who is good for you. You know, who do you surround yourself? You know, and as a kid, we would hear the dicho, dime con quien andas, diré quien eres. You know, tell me who you hang around with and I'll tell you who you are. And we know, we know that, you know, the people that, that surround us, you know, how they treat us, their attitude, the way that they uh, view life and the way they deal with life will rub off on us. It will have a reflection. Their energy will get attached to us. And I know it's it's difficult sometimes because some of us live with families, in families that have woundedness, that have their own challenges. And and the thing is that if we don't prepare and, and are disciplined in how we respond and how we live in sometimes difficult situations, then what will happen is the toxicity, the anger, the negativity, the weightedness will control us. So how do you respond in those situations? But the first question is, so who is good for you? Who do you want to spend more time with? Who do you want to surround yourself with? And maybe that is a, an elder or a teacher. One of the things that I've been really reinforcing for people is to look for those elders, look for those teachers, and, and don't wait. Don't wait to talk to them. Call them. You know, I get people that say, you know, Maestro, I'd, you know, I'd love to talk to you. I say, well, call me. And I have people that say, well, you know, I've, I've been really wanting to talk to you. I've missed you. And, you know, I need your teachings and all of that. And uh, and I said, well, have you called me? 
well, no, I know you're so busy. And well, you will not know unless you call me. And not that I'm inviting everybody to call me. But if you have, you know, people that, you know, really can be a source of guidance for you, a source of blessing for you, reach out to them. Maybe they can be you. We all need teachers. We all need people that can support us. We all need people that can help us. And, you know, part of that who is good for you then leads us to what is good for you, right? What type of involvement are you going to have with different activities? And I know that this world is real challenging. And for many of us that work in the area of social justice and racial equity and reform and all of that, it's a um, an area of strong challenges and of opposing views. And we can very much get into that mentality of, you know, us against them and them being enemies and all of that. And I think how we look at things is very, very important too. That everyone is part of the circle of life, whether whatever part of the circle you're on and whatever your political view or your spiritual view or intellectual view is. But I think it's really, really important that we not allow the toxicity and the anger and the hatefulness and even the racism and oppression that lives in this world to overcome us. We must do things with love. And love, let's not get it twisted. Love does not mean weak, and it does not mean that we're not going to share our voice, and it doesn't mean that we're, we're not going to be forthright. It doesn't mean we're not going to protect those around us. But it doesn't have to be out of anger or hate. And so choosing you know, who and how we do things is a part of that if you will, self-preservation and growing the sense of our sacredness and our blessedness within us. And so I would have you contemplate on, you know, that. And, you know, I know in in some families, in, in my family, you know, we had loud talking people, you know, uh, they just talk loud, they just talk loud. And, you know, really in, in the barrio there, you know, you talk loud and you joke and you tease and sometimes put people down. And, you know, we grew up like that. We grew up in that, you know, the kabula, the, the joking and, and teasing people and, you know, hitting them up. And in that neighborhood where I grew up in Compton, there's also the dozens that, you know, the African-Americans would play where, you know, talk about the mama jokes and all of that. And, you know, and that's cool, you know, sometimes. But when you live in a world that is constantly challenging you and constantly putting you down and constantly making you feel like you're not worth anything, you know, it, it may be a time where we need to shift those things, you know, because not that it's bad to tease and to joke, but but maybe not about somebody's character or somebody's identity or the way somebody looks. You know, maybe we need to transform that and, and begin to look at how and what words we use and how we share, uh, not only about ourselves, but about others as well. What is it that can feed the blessings and the sacredness of other people, you know? And so as we begin the year, think about that first teaching, that first teaching of you are sacred and you are a blessing, you know, which emphasizes the value of dignidad, of dignity, that everyone has a sense of dignity within them. It's connected to, to a, a sacred identity that's connected to sacred ancestors, that's connected to sacred ways. And, and so it, it brings us then to that challenge of how is it that we build the discipline of doing that daily? And those are, you know, those are the things that I saw my grandma do, you know, that she would, you know, get up every morning and start her prayer, you know, start the recommitment, get up with gratitude and get up giving gratitude, even though, you know, maybe we didn't have a lot in the house, she would still be grateful. And maybe we only had beans, but she was grateful for those beans. And so I, I want to challenge you all, you know, to recognize that in order to be able to, to grow the sacredness uh, in our families, in our communities, in our world, it has to start with us. And it has to start with us honoring our sacredness and honoring the blessedness of who we are. And then our challenge is how do we share that? How do we, we share that out with other people? And it's, it's as simple as acknowledgement. It's as simple as greeting people. It's as simple as saying good morning. It's as simple as sending a text. You know, my Esther Susie, she has a, a habit of, of sending people texts and she loves emojis, man. She sends all these wonderful emojis. I'm, I'm not into emojis. I don't know how to work them and all of that, but she sends these emojis to a bunch of people every day. You know, positive emojis, love emojis, funny emojis, things that just lift spirit, right? 
and it doesn't seem like a big thing, but but she gets responses that say, you know, wow, how'd you know I needed that? How'd you know I needed to laugh? How'd you know I needed that picture of that heart? How did you know I needed to remind? And a, a lot of things, you know, go on in this world. You know, sometimes you need more messages. And so I encourage you that way to not only acknowledge you as a blessing and you as sacred, but reach out to other folks. Don't wait to contact them or now we can text, you know, or to call them or to visit them. You know, and if you have relatives and especially elders, go visit them, go uh, talk with them, listen to their stories. And we recognize that elders tell them stories sometimes over and over again and may repeat themselves, may repeat the questions. But that's part of the teaching, part of the teaching that in order to grow the love, sometimes you need sacrifice. And I know, for me, when I get visitors, when I get people that visit or call me, for no reason at all, you know, what a, a joy it brings to my life. So I want to challenge you as you listen today, who you're going to call. Call somebody. Call somebody that, that maybe you haven't talked to in a while. And it then brings up, you know, some of the work we need to do in honoring the sacredness of all people, because we recognize that some of the people in our lives carry wounds, and they carry, you know, hurtful habits, and they carry wounded ways, and they have done stuff maybe to us or to people in our lives that has brought struggle and pain. Part of that work for us to be able to maintain our sacredness and not get into our sense of resentment or anger or hostility or wanting to be revengeful or our separateness is forgiveness, is releasing and letting go. It's the beginning of the year and it's a good time to let go. It's a good time to let's take a deep breath and release. Release whatever you know, resentment, whatever anger, whatever thoughts and negativity that you have towards anyone. You know, and maybe you pick one person today. And and it doesn't mean that what that person did or what happened uh, was okay. It doesn't mean that you were saying that, that, you know, it doesn't matter. And you're not saying that, you know, because of the forgiveness, you're, you want to interact with people or get together or you want to be their best friend or now hang out with them. It just means that you're not going to allow it to burden you anymore. You're not going to allow it to sit in your spiritual realm that you're going to let it go. And when you let it go like that, it leaves room for blessings. It leaves room for more abundance. It leaves room for more creativity. It leaves room for blessings to come in you. And you know, what I've found along this journey is that when we occupy our, our time and occupy our energy, you know, only in the negative and only in the problems. And even some of us that work in this in this area of, of talking about generational trauma and you know working with you know social justice and all of that, you know, I find myself having to talk about in order to lift people's awareness and education around generational trauma and what has happened to to people of color and indigenous people. You know, I find myself having to, in presentations, really create that awareness so that people can begin an understanding, so they can release and maybe shift policies and procedures and shift the way, you know, people are treated. So I find myself that I need to talk about that and lift that up. But it's really, really important for me not to hold on to that and to create as much space in my dialogue, in what I share, in what I do about the blessings. Because we can continue to tell that same story. And when you occupy your time and your energy only talking about negative, only talking about the oppression, only talking about the racism, only talking about the injustice, then it leaves very little room for what could be. So in terms of, of us lifting up the sacredness and blessings of our communities and world. I really want to have you think about devoting less energy to the negative, to the, the hurtful, so that you can create more space 
and more dialogue and more contemplation for what could be. What is the world that we want to grow and develop? What would that look like? What would it look like if all people were seen as sacred and as blessings? What would it look like if all children lived in a world, in an environment, in a family, in a community, in a school that loved them for who they are? What would it be for all our people of color, indigenous people, to be surrounded in their families, in their communities, in their schools, in society, through the media, with images and teachings and studies and lessons that reinforced their beauty and their sacredness and their sense of being a blessing? What would it look like if we could in a very sacred way, deal with the challenges that we have in life, deal with the inequities in a sacred, beautiful way that honors the dignity, respect, love, and trust of all people. And I have you contemplate that because that's what we want to water. And it seems like a monumental task. It seems like, you know, wow, we could never have that. Of course you could have that. Because it starts one act at a time, it starts one person at a time, and it starts with you in your relationship, how you treat those people in your relationship. How do I do that with my compañera? How do I do that with my children? How do I do that with my grandchildren? How do I do that with my coworkers? And it begins by just that sense of acknowledging their sacredness. And believe me, it's not easy when people don't walk in sacredness, when people walk with a sense of negativity and a sense of hostileness and a sense of coming at you in a, in a real negative way. But that's where the medicine is at. That's where the medicine of how you don't allow that to influence you. You know, it doesn't allow you to, uh, you know, to really trigger you that way. And, and it brings to mind, you know, even as a, as I'm speaking about this, a, you know, I have to acknowledge that I still struggle with these things every day. And the inequity and the racism and the injustice and all of that exists. And even though I've been doing this a long, long time, you know, and I travel all over speaking about this and speak to large audiences, you know, about this transformational healing and about, you know, healing generational wounds and about addressing racism and oppression and, and lifting communities up in their sacredness. You know, I find myself challenged as well. And I grew up, you know, feeling these negative things and, and in a society that really felt very hostile to me and my family and my black and brown relatives there and living there in Compton Watts and then in other communities. And But, you know, you go on with your work and I find myself, you know, a number of years ago going to do this presentation. And I traveled across the country and I'm supposed to do a keynote presentation at night. And I walk in the room and I'm dressed kind of casual and with a guayabera on, you know, white shirt, kind of casual shirt. And as I'm going to my room, I walk into the, the ballroom where I'm supposed to speak in the evening and they're just finishing lunch. And I wanted to check out the room and check out, you know, where I was going to speak and kind of get a, an idea so I could begin, you know, my preparation, my prayer in preparing for the presentation. And I walked to the back of the room right there, you know, in the back of the tables, and people were, you know, finishing their lunch. And as I'm standing there, this lady turns around to me and says, uh, can you give me some more coffee, please? And her neighbor says, yes, I can give me some too. And I'm like, what? And this lady thinks I'm the mesero, thinks I'm the, the waiter there. And it just triggered me. It just triggered me in a, in a very deep way. And I'm like, Dude, man, you know, I, I'm a noted authority. I'm a keynote speaker here. I'm an author. I'm, and these women think that I'm the waiter. And, and let me be real clear. There's nothing shameful about being a waiter. I worked in jobs like that and I would do that's a very honorable job and, you know, working to, to provide for yourself and provide for you. So that wasn't the issue. The issue was that I felt again that I was being stereotyped. I was being looked at in a certain way. And, and so they asked, can you give me some more coffee? And, you know, and I had to breathe real deeply because, you know, it triggered something real deep where I just wanted to kick somebody's, you know, I mean, I was ready just to go. I was back in Compton, man. I was like, dang, you know, what's, what's with this? What's up with, you know, and, and it just, 
And I realized, man, I still got more work to do. You know, but it triggered me really deeply. And, and you know, because I've been walking this road a long time and because, you know, I have you know, many, many people that have guided me and helped me heal. And I've been in circulo and I've been in, in ceremony and I've lived these ways and I have wonderful people that teach me and reinforce me and pray for me and help me. The trigger was was not going to have me react. You know, I took a deep breath. I said a quick little prayer. I went to the waiter and I said, can you get these ladies some coffee, right? But it didn't go away. It didn't go away. And my choice was, well, how do I deal with this, man? How do I deal with this, you know? And so as I went back to my room, you know, I, um, I was praying on it and thinking about it and, and uh, you know, tried to let it go and it still lingered a little bit. And I went uh, that evening to do this keynote presentation, you know. And as I got up to, uh, you know, they were introducing me with all my credentials and accolades and everything. And, and uh, But what I had done before I left that table, I looked at the name tags of these two women that were there. And so I knew their names. And so when, after they introduced me and, you know, and I was brought to the podium, I thanked them. You know, I did my my beginning, you know, acknowledgments of, you know, creator ancestors of, you know, all the people that are important in my life. And then I said, but I want to acknowledge two, two women that uh, they greeted me when I uh, came in this room and and I gave their names and I introduced both of them. I said, and can you please stand up? Let's, let's give them a round of applause because they greeted me in a, in a, a very, very special way, right? And they stood up and they were very embarrassed, of course, and, and people clapped and, and, you know, <laughs> looked around and, and inside of me, I said, you know, I'm, I'm like, yeah, you know, uh, maybe they'll learn this lesson, right? Uh, but that was the barrio in me. That was, that was the, the jokester that came from the neighborhood in me. That was my dad in me. That was, trying to, you know, balance out my dad. You don't let anybody mess with you when my mother is lesson of respect all people and don't be like them and don't act like them. And I combined that and turned that into, you know, a transformational teaching. And with that, I was able to let it go. So, so sometimes it takes a little bit of creativity to stay in the sacredness, to stay in the blessed way. Sometimes it does take humor, and sometimes it does take prayer, and sometimes it does take creativity. And and so I want to just lift that up, is how are you going to creatively address those things that challenge you, that tend to draw you out of pocket, out of that sacred place? You know, and what I will say to some of you is some of you may need counsel. Some of you may need to to talk with someone around, you know, what you're carrying and the people in your life and the, the difficult people. And, and that's the traditional way. The traditional way is, is in communities. We always had people we could go to. It's in this Western society that's made us believe that we're individuals and we should be independent and we should know everything ourselves and be able to handle everything ourselves. And if we have issues or we get sad or get anxious or get depressed or are struggling, figure it out, pull yourself up in your bootstraps and, you know, but, the reality is that that's a you know very oppressive way that the oppressors taught us to isolate us and to separate us in order that we would deteriorate and our spirits would not be able to get through the struggles that our spirits would not be able to manage through the oppression and the difficulty and the day-to-day -day trauma in our indigenous way it's about inklokenawake. It's about the interconnected sacredness that we recognize that we are always interconnected. And on that day, that day that I was challenged, and you know, I went to prayer, I went to thinking about my grandma that would tell me every morning, you're a blessing. That you're a blessing. You're a... And sometimes we have to go back to the reverberations of people that love us in spite of, that bless us in spite of, that care for us in spite of? Who are the in spite of in your life? We need to have those in spite of people, that in spite of our struggles, in spite of our you know, shortcomings, in spite of our difficult days, they will still reinforce that. But that begins with us being that for other people. See, because you will draw what you manifest. So if you begin manifesting that, 
then other people will too. You know, if you begin signing off and I do this by saying bendiciones, now I see a bunch of people that are connected to me sign off by saying bendiciones or, you know, using the, the phrase, you are sacred, you're a blessing. I've done that for years and now people are saying it all. I mean, what you begin to share, it can grow. So it's really important for us to recognize that that sense of enkloke nawark or interconnected sacredness is an important part of maintaining the sense of our sacredness and our blessedness. That what and who are you connected to? It's important for me every morning also to go and greet Tata Sor, grandfather, son, and and you know I want to acknowledge one of my teachers, one of my elders, Don Marcelino. May he rest in peace. You know, he taught me so much about the, the power of Tata Sol, of Grandfather Son, and of the blessing and the energy that the elements can bring to us. You know, and I would watch him before he went and did his healings with people. He would get up in the morning and he would go and give thanks to Grandfather Son. And then he would use the sun's rays to bless himself and cleanse himself off and bring that energy in himself. He understood the power of the elements, right? So even if they're not people around you, we have elements around us, right? And even if you live in a region where the sun is not out, you have Mother Earth that is there. And I remember as a kid, you know, sometimes when I'd be bored, there's nothing to do, or I would just, you know, frustrated being in my house because we didn't have a lot to do, I would go lay on the grass. And I don't know why I did that. I just went and laid on the grass, and sometimes I'd pick the grass and chew on the grass, and I'd look up at the clouds. And didn't understand how healing that was. And me laying on the grass, how the that the vibration of the earth, that is really when we are balanced, the earth's vibration is the same vibration of equilibrium that that our metabolism has when it's balanced. So I didn't understand me laying on the grass. And it's the same thing when you're gardening or putting your hands into the earth in a good way, that there's a healing that goes on, there's a rebalancing that goes on. So it's part of us recognizing that there may be elements in the universe that we need to connect to, that we need to uh, call on. But also, you know, the, who are those people in our lives that we can connect to, that we do connect to on an ongoing basis, that can, can help us when we're struggling, help us when we don't feel sacred, help us when we don't feel blessed, that when we're struggling with ourselves or things that are going on in our lives or people that are going on in our lives, who do you go to? Who are your go-to people? We need go-to people. And it may be that you have, you know, a favorite podcast. You know, we have a series of probably over 110 podcasts that we've recorded. I would challenge you to to pick those ones that, that really resonated with you and listen to them again and again. Uh, that's what they're for. They're there really to lift that up, right? To lift up your, your sense of sacredness and, and blessedness, you know. And so as you, you begin this year, I really want you to think about those things. The sense of you being a blessing and you being sacred just the way you are, right? And who is it and what is it that you bring into your life that help you reinforce and grow that sacredness? And what are those things that you're going to do and maybe those things you're going to stop doing? that don't feel that sacredness? What are those things that you will choose? And I asked at least one, at least one thing that you will do. I offered gratitude as one of those things, but it could be other things as well. And then maybe one thing you're gonna stop doing. And, and what I offered is maybe some negative words or thoughts that you say about yourself, uh, that maybe you don't say those things anymore. Maybe you stop talking about the negative things that often you say about yourself. And, and then I offered the, the aspect of, you know, choosing those people around you that can feed that sacredness and feed that blessing. And then the elders and, and those people that can give you counsel that can help you when you're struggling. Who are those people? Who are your go-to people, right? But in the end, in the end, it's, you know, based on, on us. They say the grass is greener, not on the other side, but where you water it. What are you going to water this year? What are you going to water? And it's one day at a time. Sometimes for some of us, it's uh, one minute at a time. Sometimes it's getting through 
the time there. And and all of us have, you know, our challenges, all of us have our addictions, all of us have our, you know, our struggles. But let us water, let us water the blessings and let us spend more time talking about the vision of what we want to be, what we would like to happen, and begin by planting that and watering that and lifting up that. As we begin this year, you know, I want to offer, you know, my prayers and my blessings to all of you. Wherever you're listening from, remember that you come from a sacred source. Your people, your ancestors, and they may be from many roots. That's, that's okay. You know, we all the roots that we have are sacred. We recognize that, you know, all of us in, in, in our rootedness are connected to people and to generations of people that have that, you know, the duality, but they all come from a sacred place. So let us acknowledge the sacredness as we lift up the medicine that is necessary. And as we, you know, move to this year, let us incorporate in our lives, you know, our traditions and ways of being that can really grow that sacredness of who we are, but really can grow all of our relations as well. You know, I, as I begin this year, want to, uh, you know, commit that, you know, we're going to, in this podcast series, we're going to try and bring you, you know, the voices and the reflections of, of many people that, that can offer those teachings that can reinforce the sacred medicine and the, and the blessings that we all need, but also that can lift up in a space the, the wounds and the, the struggles and the the difficulties that we need to cleanse and let go of. As I close today, I want to thank all of you for joining us, and, and let's let's do this year in a good way. Let us be a blessed people in our sacredness, and encourage you to uh, to offer that to other people, one person at a time. Maybe an acknowledgement, maybe a blessing, maybe a text, maybe a phone call, maybe a song. Maybe a, a good joke sometimes works, right? But from me to you, I want to thank you. Thank you for, for listening. Thank you for all you do and what you do for yourself and do for others. And as we recognize that peace in the world happens one piece at a time, and each of you carry your peace. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you do. And we hope you continue listening. Share this podcast with other folks. Give us uh, some feedback and some blessings. Tag us so that we can also uh, connect to you. And in the words of all of our ancestors, Klaso Kamadli, Omet Teodil, thank you very, very much. And may you have a wonderful, blessed year and a blessed day. Thank you very much. For more information about Healing Generations and the Healing Generations Institute, visit nationalcompadresnetwork.org and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with our new releases.